Ouch, ouch. James Bond did not do that well at the U.S. box office this weekend. Could it possibly have anything to do with the uh, spoiler, the spoilers, the ending of uh, James Bond, No Time to Die, that was leaked, of course, when the movie premiered in the U.K.? A week or two ago, uh, I did a video on this. I was pretty salty about it, but uh, you know, it seems like America has decided that they're over James Bond. There's no time for James Bond. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the rap. Again, this is uh, an industry publication asking that the next James Bond not be woke. So I don't know, guys. This is very, very interesting turn of events. Uh, we're going to talk about this before I get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Over 236,000 subs. Thank you so much for the support. Greatly appreciated, as always. Geeky is sitting this one out. She's actually at the Sci Fi Valley Con this morning in Altoona, Pennsylvania, uh, wrapping things up there. Uh, we were there yesterday, had a lot of people, a lot of people come out to see us, which is so weird because we didn't really promote it that well. But uh, again, thank you. A big thank you to all of you who did come out uh, and see us. It was very nice uh, to meet you. It really was. And hopefully we can do it again sometime. So I've been talking about James Bond and I was I was pretty salty about the uh, rumored ending of James Bond. Rumored at the time. Now it's been confirmed. Uh, spoiler alert, by the way, there are going to be spoilers in this video, I'm giving you a second or two to uh, shut the video off. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, uh, James Bond dies at the end of this movie. They kill him off. Um, of course, this is the end of uh, you know Daniel Craig's James Bond, which was a reboot. I mean, it was. They started over again with uh, Casino Royale. So more than likely, they'll just reboot James Bond with another actor uh, at a later date. And of course, you know, MGM has been sold to Amazon. So who the hell knows what they're going to do? Maybe they'll do a series or something. I don't know. But his run as James Bond is over. Uh, they, he died. They killed him. And uh, of course, critics loved it. And the reaction was mixed. I saw people online say that, hey, the movie was okay. Uh, didn't really care for them killing James Bond. But the, you know, the flip side is, you know, this is a reboot. Other people just downright pissed, right? Well, apparently... Uh, didn't do so hot at the box office. People heard what happens to James Bond that, yeah, they he did have time to die. They totally killed him off and people were pissed and they they kind of spoke with their wallets, didn't they? Because, uh, you know, James Bond only did $56 million domestically. Sounds like a lot of money in the pandemic, right? Except, you know, Venom uh, did $90 million. Uh, Shang-Chi did more than James Bond. Black Widow did more than James Bond. Uh, this is bad for a James Bond movie. And again, I think it comes down to the fact of how, you know, how they treated the character. So let's talk about this. Hollywood Reporter, today, this morning, box office, No Time to Die opens to $56 million domestically, crosses $300 million globally. Of course, that, that's great. But this is not going to be a billion-dollar movie. You know, Skyfall, I think, made a billion dollars. The 25th James Bond installment, uh, came in on the low end of expectations in North America, but should enjoy a long run based on strongholds overseas. Overseas, America doesn't want to see James Bond die. No Time to Die reported for duty at the North American box office with an estimated opening of $56 million as Hollywood attempts to recover from COVID. The James Bond event pick starring Daniel Craig as his final turn as 007 scored the fifth best domestic opening of the pandemic era. That's bad. For a James Bond movie, the fifth best domestic opening during a pandemic. Had no trouble coming in number one for the weekend ahead of Venom, which earned $32 million in its second outing after opening to a pandemic best of $90 million. Heading into the weekend, MGM and Eon Productions No Time to Die had hoped to cross $60 million, uh, but that did not happen. Again, I 100% believe it's because they fucking killed James Bond and people didn't want to see it. They're done. They don't want to see it. The movie's opening underscores the ongoing challenges facing the box office recovery. Bullshit. Bullshit. People went to go see Venom. Venom was so packed. There was a, a Sunday afternoon. We went to a matinee. We went a Sunday afternoon. There was one empty seat. Bullshit. 
Bullshit. It's because people didn't want to watch James Bond die. They knew what happened. They heard about it. They're like, fuck this. And they didn't go. I didn't go. I don't want to see James Bond die. You know, I know he's coming back. I know they're bringing back another, you know, they'll have another James Bond. It's it's kind of the principle of the thing. I don't want to see James Bond die. I don't care. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's another franchise I can just completely walk away from at this point. It's like, well, yep, that was fun. You know, I was a James Bond fan for like 30 years. That was fun. And now it's over. Now it's time to move on to something else. Um, yeah, box office challenges. Yeah. The, the, the challenge at the box office is making shitty movies that people don't want to go see, you know, or, or, or destroying established characters. That's the challenge. That is the challenge. No Time to Die was pushed back three times due to COVID. Guess what else was pushed back? Venom. And you know what else is going to break box office records? I guarantee it. And it was a movie that was pushed back too. Ghostbusters Afterlife. Ghostbusters Afterlife is going to make so much money. It's going to make so much money. I, I guarantee it. The, the buzz has been pretty good. People have been waiting for this movie. doesn't matter that they push this movie back. It's what they did to James Bond in the movie that people have a problem with, in my opinion. While superhero movies such as Venom feast on younger consumers, the Bond series has always been fueled in large part by moviegoers 35 and older, a demo that's more reluctant to return to cinemas throughout the pandemic. Bullshit. Bullshit. Now you're making excuses. Oh, it's because Bond is for old people and old people don't want to get sick so they didn't go see Bond. Bullshit. People who grew up watching James Bond movies didn't want to watch him fucking die. They don't want to watch him be humiliated and die. That is that simple. It's that simple. In my opinion, older women in particular are nervous about watching James Bond die. Yeah, I bet. No Time to Die certainly succeeded in convincing certain adults to show up for the first time since the pandemic, but movie going for this quadrant still hasn't hit pre-pandemic levels. Bullshit. Older people were at Venom. Bullshit. Older people were at A Quiet Place. We went to go see that. Bullshit. Uh, there were actually older people at Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer, of all things. Older people watching Demon Slayer. Bullshit. Old people didn't want to show up for No Time to Die. How come it made all kinds of money overseas? There's old people over there too, right? It's because nobody wanted to watch him die. They had no time for No Time to Die. They had no time to watch James Bond die. That's, that's what it was. No Time to Die skewed male, while 57% of ticket buyers were over the age of 35 uh, including 36% over 45. As a way of comparison, only 9% of tickets uh, buyers going to see Venom Let There Be Carnage were 45 and older. I saw older people at ours, but who knows? Maybe the grandparents were taking people. Another factor, No Time to Die, which $250 million to $300 million to produce before a... <laughs> which costs $250 million to three hundred to produce before a mega marketing spend runs a hefty two hours and 43 minutes, reducing showtimes and making it the longest Bond film. They're looking for excuses. We don't understand. This movie was supposed to make a billion dollars. We don't understand. Why didn't people want to show up to watch James Bond fucking die? I don't understand. It's baffling. There has to be some other reason. It can't possibly be us. It has to be you. Because look, No Time to Die has been embraced by critics. It's been embraced by critics and earned an A- minus cinema score. So it has to be some other reason. It, it can't possibly be as simple as, as people not wanting to watch uh, James Bond die. They, they're like, we're out. We're not doing this. We're not doing The Last Jedi all over again. Uh, not doing it. Now, that being said, James Bond will return. He always returns. Now, what, what form is he going to take uh, next time he returns? Well, it's interesting. For all the talk of like, it's time for the women to take over the 007 franchise. It's time for women now to be 007 too. Ladies can be 007. Uh, yeah, The Wrap, Hollywood, Hollywood publication. Whoever plays James Bond next, please don't make him a woke bloke. Interesting. Uh, commentary from the rap. And they basically are talking about people, you know, having different opinions. Mostly they're like, yeah, people were like, yeah, James Bond was basically a rapist and he was, you know, a very machismo character. And, and, uh, you know, yeah, times have to change, you know? Um, but this is interesting. 
This is very interesting. This is very telling. I think I think James Bond, I think, might be a tipping point in the uh, quote-unquote pop culture wars. Culture wars, whatever the hell is going on. Because now you're 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 messing with normie entertainment and it's it's showing at the box office that people are are out uh look at this all well intentioned ideas you know talking about you know well james bond should be a woman and da 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 uh, offered in the spirit of modernizing the series for a more inclusive 21st century world but just like the brunettes only uh, nudniks about when daniel craig was cast like he should dye his hair the proponents of these recommendations kind of missed the point of the character and his singular place in the pop cultural ecosystem. For sure, the franchise needs to keep up with the times. There's no denying that Sean Connery's Bond was, in retrospect, a bit rapey. Those gay villains and diamonds are forever, Mr. Wint and Mr. Kidd, yeah, they were offensive stereotypes. Let's not even get started on Roger Moore's leisure suits. They were pretty awful. But Bond himself, a sexist, misogynist dinosaur as Judy Dench's M described him in Goldeneye, has basically remained unchanged from the moment he introduced himself to the camera, last name first, in Dr. No. All the essential DNA building blocks, the sardonic wit, suave ruthlessness, the irresponsible libido, the casual straightening of his necktie after bagging a bad guy, are still intact after nearly 60 years on screen. And that dogged consistency is what has made him the most durable action figure in cinematic history. The fact that James Bond, even though they update him, has relatively stayed unchanged, that James Bond is James Bond. Regardless of who plays him, James Bond is James Bond in every movie. Uh, you shouldn't retool James Bond because Bond isn't tethered to any actual time. His world is an eternal male fantasy filled with shiny-headed supervillains and hollowed-out volcanoes, vintage Aston Martins with machine gun grills, and bodacious female sidekicks with comically obscene names. Most attempts to meddle with that formula in a big way, as when Timothy Dalton put the character through sensitivity training in the late 80s, turning him into a sort of a British Alan Alda, have almost always gone horribly awry. This is coming from The Wrap, a Hollywood publication. They're telling you not to fuck with James Bond. Some tinkering is obviously unavoidable. Eventually, 007 gave up cigarettes, and the sidekicks aren't called pussy galore anymore. But raising Bond's consciousness... We're talking about a government-sanctioned serial killer. How woke can he get? Very interesting. Uh, Daniel Craig talked to the Radio Times, um, and they, they asked him if James Bond should be played by a woman. He said the answer to that is very simple. There should simply be better parts for women and actors of color. Why should a woman play James Bond when there should be a part just as good as James Bond but for a woman? Thank you. Thank you, uh, Daniel Craig. That's what we've been trying to say that's what we talk about all the time we're like we're not saying that hollywood shouldn't be more diverse and shouldn't be more inclusive what we're saying is that hollywood shouldn't retcon existing characters and tinker with the formula just to uh, give the appearance of being more inclusive and diverse when in fact it's doing a huge disservice to people because they're getting hand-me-downs they're getting hand-me-down characters they're not being given new franchises uh, we're not creating anything new. We're just we're just retreading old pop culture, and we're not making anybody happy. You're alienating old audiences, and younger audiences a lot of times don't care. Like Disney Star Wars, like it's got its fans. Star Wars has its fans, and they're very very good fans. A lot of them with a lot of disposable income. And they decided they were going to chase a new audience, and it chased off a lot of the old audience, and now Star Wars is damaged. It's damaged goods. Uh, if it wasn't for The Mandalorian, uh, Star Wars would be in a much, much worse place right now. You know, and again, killing off, destroying the character of Luke Skywalker before killing him off was a big part of that. Uh, Barbara Broccoli from Eon said, uh, James Bond could be of any color, but he is male. I believe we should be creating new characters for women, strong female characters. I'm not particularly interested in taking a male character and having a woman play it. I think women are far more interesting than that. Again, Doctor Who. Why did we need to have the Doctor regenerate into a woman when we had other female Time Lords? You couldn't introduce Romana, reintroduce her, and spin her off into her own show? You know, I don't understand why we couldn't do that. Why, why couldn't you do that? I mean, Sarah Jane got her own show, for God's sake. 
You know, Captain Jack got his own show for God's sake. You couldn't you couldn't just spin off Romana into a series and then you've got a female Time Lord with her own TARDIS somehow doing her thing. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like we didn't have to do this. Uh, very interesting though that even the media is like, yeah, you know, when you bring him back, don't don't mess with him. But you know they will. Uh, but I think audiences are speaking, and I'm sorry. I don't think it's because the audience is old or afraid to go to the theater or any of that shit. I think people heard what happens in this movie, and they withheld their money. So I'm going to wrap this one up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants, guys. We'll talk later. <laughs>